All right, everybody, welcome back to Nomad Nation Shop Talk. Back with us again is Darren. Today we're gonna try something a little different. We are going to start answering some questions from the viewers. And so what you can do is if you have any questions about your Jeep or your off-road vehicle of any kind, really, whether it's upgrades, mechanical problems, will this work with that? What should I do? You know, which works better? What's your opinion? We're gonna answer every single email that we possibly can and we're gonna select a few to talk about and answer on the show itself. And for those of you that have seen the episode where myself and Allison Parliament are talking, Allison is the person who started the whole Jeep ducking phenomenon. Uh, what I'm doing is for every question that we get and we answer on the show, I'm donating $5 to the Ducking Jeeps for Teachers charity. So Darren, welcome back. Thank uh, you. I guess we'll just jump right into some of these questions. We've got three that we've chosen. We've probably gotten 40 or 50 emails, so it's impossible to answer every one in an episode. We chose these three because they're somewhat common questions. So Darren, why don't you start us off with our first one? Uh, Daniel in Missouri sent us an email and asked a question. So Darren, take it away. Daniel in Missouri, he's asking, I uh, have a 2020 Gladiator with the Max Toe package. Wanted to upgrade my differential covers and I'm wondering if the Poison Spider bombshell will fit. Thanks. All right, so he's got a 2020 Gladiator. He said it had a max tow package. So the Gladiator's got to have the Dana 44s. Dana 44s. So really, yeah, the short answer is yes. If you buy the Dana 44 covers, they will fit. So with, with the bombshells, they go by axle, not by vehicle. If you've got a Dana 30, you're gonna wanna look up at the Dana 30 bombshell cover, uh, got a Dana 35, 44, so on. Yeah. Uh, question for you, Dave, why do we wanna upgrade our diff covers? The reason that we wanna do that is because the factory differential covers, although they're adequate, they're not nearly as strong as an upgraded, made from better steel, harder steel. Mm -hmm. They're cast differently. So they can take more of the abuse that we put on our Jeeps when we're off-road. So if you go down a ledge or you hit a rock and you take a direct hit to your differential, it will help protect from puncturing a lot better. Take, for example, the Poison Spider or the G2 covers. You know, those things are pretty stout. Right. They're quite thick and they're made from a higher carbon steel. So I actually put the, the bombshells, the Poison Spiders, on my JK. You did, yeah. Because I came off a ledge and it actually peeled back the bottom edge. So it was no longer sealing. I got a little leak. Um, one of the things I noticed when I was putting them on is just how thick they are. Do you think there's any clearance issues anywhere? Or? In some cases, if you've upgraded your steering, any of your steering components, you might want to check that. Cause I know you flipped your steering stabilizer right. and that could potentially cause a clearance issue. Had to make a couple adjustments. Yeah, make a yeah. couple adjustments. The main thing is your drag link. You want to make sure you have clearance from your drag link, and you also want to make sure that your track bar, that you have clearance from your track bar. Okay. Uh, for those of you uh, at home, the track bar is the, the one that really keeps your axle centered, and it's typically the straight line. It's got the little dip in the top, the, the arch in the top. Right there at your differential. Right cover. there at the <laughs> differential cover. So that's designed to clear your differential cover. So you just you want to make sure that you're going to have enough clearance by and large you should they manufacture those for multiple applications so i've only seen one or two instances uh, where they did not have clearance simply because one of them was on an lj once we did the high steer kit and we put on the new new suspension we wound up getting clearance but yeah so you just got to be be careful but by and large it'll fit just about every application okay a big question is how do we know what, what axle we have? Well, typically, if you buy a Wrangler, the sport models have a Dana 30 front and a Dana 44 rear. The Saharas, same thing. The Rubicons have Dana 44 front and Dana 44 rear. I believe the Gladiators are 44s, both front and rear. So again, short answer is Daniel, yes. If you buy the Dana 44 covers, they will fit. All right, All right. so what do we have next? We have Josh in Michigan, and Josh has a 2013 Jeep Wrangler Sport. Uh, he says, my check engine light is on, and my Jeep is running funny. It's, idl <laughs> it's idling rough, and I feel like I've lost power on acceleration. Took it to an auto parts store and used their code reader, and it gave me a code P0306. 
I took it to the dealership and they told me that cylinder six is misfiring and that I need to have a bunch of work done to fix it. What should I do? Trade it in. <laughs> do it now. Come on, Dave. No, no. In reality, <laughs> so the number six cylinder is kind of an infamous cylinder on those three six motors. And I know what the problem is. I believe Darren knows what the problem is. But before we get to that, we're going to talk a little bit through about that number six cylinder. First of all, when you go to an auto parts store and you borrow one of their code readers, they're very basic. Right. Um, they're not advanced. They're not, uh, you know, they don't have, they don't give a whole lot of information other than this code. So then you have to either look in the book or go online and look up the code. And even when you go online, you find the same information. Well, it's going to say number six cylinder misfire. misfire. Right. That's all it's really going to tell you. The more advanced scanners, code readers, like the ones we have here at the shop, the diagnostic, that's going to tell you more information. Right. What should the guy check for? I mean, honestly, what, what, would, what are some of the checks that he should do? On a four-cycle engine, what's it take? It takes air, spark, fuel, and compression. Yeah. So of those things, what's the easiest things to check, and, and how do you check those? Start with airflow. Uh, by simply checking your air filter. Sometimes a blocked air filter or a clogged air filter can cause a misfire. Typically, it's on a random cylinder. It could be any cylinder, but yeah, airflow can definitely cause a, a misfire. So even just an air filter? Even just an air filter. That's one of the most underappreciated things on a vehicle, any vehicle, is the air filter. We've pulled them out of the shop where they look, I mean, you can't even see through them. Uh, change them regularly and that will help but I think in this particular problem we believe that it's the fuel injector injectors are somewhat common on that's the three, that's on actually the on, as not only on the three six but that number six cylinder that's a very common issue is um, it a heat issue or what do you think it is I would be willing to bet you that if Josh's Jeep was here and we had it plugged into our machine it would probably give us another code and it would say that the circuit is open the injector circuit is open. That's probably what it would say. Very rarely is it your coil pack. Very rarely is it a spark plug. Um, it could be those things, but... He doesn't mention how many miles He doesn't it, mention so. any of that. And, uh, you know, if we had a little bit more information, it would be easier to say. But regardless of whether it's a spark plug, coil pack, or an injector, those are really the three big things it could be. So that's about a two and a half, three hour job to... Take the upper intake off, get to the cylinder. Uh, also, it's recommended that you replace the plenum gaskets when you're having the work done. You know, what's expensive, what's not expensive, what's worth it, what's what not worth it. That's, it's hard to answer that question. Uh, it's probably a five to $600 job to replace that injector, uh, depending on where you take it. The best thing you can do is get a second opinion, take to another shop, have them look at it. But I think from what we know about these things, fuel injector, that's... So would there be a way that a home mechanic could diagnose it themselves? You have to get to the injector. And like we said a minute ago, you have to take off the upper intake and take out the coil pack. As long as you're in there, you might as well take out the coil pack and check the spark plug. But in order to test that, you have to do a resistance test on the plug. That's really the only way that you're going to know if the injector's bad. Or, I mean, if you're really feeling up to it, you can switch injectors and see, and you'd have to run another, you have to run another diagnostic test. But if you check, you can just swap them with your number five or your four or whatever. See if the Put it all back changes. together. <laughs> you have to put it all back together. Right. Start it, drive it around, see if it throws a code. And then if it does, read the code. And then if it changes to... Now, number five has a problem, you know it's your fuel injector. But then you have to go and take it all apart and put in a new injector. And if you're going to do one injector, you might as well do them all. Right. Because <clears throat> those parts, are they're kind of like O2 sensors and ball joints and things like that. If one's starting to go, the odds are the other ones aren't far behind it. So it's always a good idea to spend a little extra money now because at most shops, I know like here at ours, if we're going to do the job and we've already done the labor to access the part it's much cheaper in the end just to do them all we've got a customer in here now that um we did some head gaskets on and they had an o2 sensor uh failed 
So we replaced the O2 sensor. We did recommend that they replace all of them. Uh, they declined, which is perfectly fine because there, there really wasn't anything wrong with their O2 sensors. However, it's been about three weeks and now that the Jeep's sitting back out there because the check engine light came on, it started running rough, uh, especially as the engine warmed up. So we're now replacing the remaining O2 sensors. So same thing with the fuel injector. The labor's done. I mean, all it is is just a matter of popping those out and putting the new ones in. So you're really just paying for the additional, well, you should be just paying for the additional injectors right. once the initial labor's been done. So uh, it could be the difference between a $800 bill for replacing everything with the cost of all of the injectors versus a six or $700 bill each time. Right. So... And I know even just when I'm working on my, my vehicles at home, it's like if I'm taking, if I'm taking the brakes apart, I'm looking, I'm looking at the other things in there. I'm looking at the hubs. I'm looking at, at the axle bearings, the mm. axle seals, that kind yeah. of stuff. Because once you've got it apart, it's just easier. And that transfers right over to a reputable shop. Yeah. All right. Uh, it looks like we have one more. Uh, Carolyn in Ohio has a 2014 Wrangler Rubicon, and she wants new hood latches. Uh, to help keep her hood more secure while she's driving on the highway. Uh, there are literally hundreds of options. Can you please help me? What do you recommend? The ones that we typically put on when people are having this issue, especially because we've got, you know, you're driving down I-70 and you're going, you know, 70, 75 miles an hour and all of a sudden a big rig shoots past you like you're standing still and your hood just, I mean, you can. Oh yeah. I mean, the first, first few times it happens, you're just wondering when that hood's going to fly <laughs> yeah. up in your face. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's not a lot of love for the stock, the factory uh, hood latches. So they're, they're glorified bungee cords. Yeah, pretty much. So we do, we recommend metal, whether it's aluminum or steel, typically they're made from a, aluminum with the adjustable turnbuckles. That way you can adjust it a little bit more to make that hood latch slap down tighter or snap into place. But um, yeah, we've got, we've got, actually we've got a Jeep out in the parking lot now with a set of adjustables on there. We can go take a look at that. So let's go out there and take a look and we'll show everybody at home what, what they are. All righty. All right, everybody. Uh, we're standing outside the shop and we've got Darren's Rubicon sitting here. So we want to show you the stock. So as I said, basically glorified bungee cord rubberized and they do stretch so as you're coming down can't really show it while they're on there because they, they're pretty tight but the wind gets them but your hood will just sit here and do this as you're driving down the road and then when you get into a wind tunnel and it it'll just i mean it could shake the whole hood it, it can get scary yeah. honestly now that we've taken a look at the stock hood latches let's go over here and take a look at some aftermarket options uh, as you can see on this one these are the rugged ridge adjustable hood latches they're about 90 to 100 bucks take about a half hour to install and you can they're easily adjustable and they will solve your problem pretty good looking too dave yeah they're not not bad i mean they're definitely more stout and now we're going to go take a look at another customer's vehicle that has the dv8 hood latches now we're going to take a look at the dv8 hood latches you can see a little different design than the rugged ridge same concept uh, these have the adjustable turnbuckle and for these you push the button on the top of the flange pull out the pin Lay the turnbuckle down and you can open the hood. These do the same thing. They keep your hood nice and tight. You can adjust them, like I said. Uh, these run about $125 to $140, depending on which style you get. It's a very good option, metal components. Uh, they're very solid, but no matter which way you go, either one's gonna solve your problem. So now we've seen the stock hood hinges, uh, the hood. Now we've seen the stock hood hat, hood. Now that we've shown you the stock, Okay, so we've looked, we've taken, we've looked at the stock hinge. Uh, take a breath, Dave. <laughs> Just take a breath. <laughs> we've looked at the stock garbage. Yeah. We've looked at the stock bullshit. 